Mr. Joshua Alabo, uh, a lawyer, a human rights activist, talking to us about uh, his impression on the fight against corruption. Well, what do you say to those who say um, the reason why they also focus on that is they need to remind all arms of government and all officers that they themselves are not also above the law because uh, whatever they do, they should also know that they will come under scrutiny because they are all being paid with public funds. Yes, and that is why the DSS went ahead to exhibit the search warrant that was procured from, from lawful authority magistrate court in FCT. So in as much as a search warrant had been procured, there's nothing illegal about it. And even the Supreme Court, as far back as 1968, went ahead to discuss the import of illegal search that is conducted. He does not affect the admissibility or <laughs> the admissibility of the evidence. You can only bring action against the person. So now the issue of our legality is well covered by the activity of DSS. In as much as the search warrant has been procured, uh, the time of executing the search is, uh, can be done any time within the ambit of the administration of criminal justice. Act. It's only the arrest that must be uh, done between 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., but the search can be conducted any time. And the other Jamaican question that we must add about our mind to, this is beyond uh, a mere petition. When you discover that there's a procedure of fraud in a particular person, is it logical, reasonable, attainable for you to seek a permission before you go to the scene to recover the exhibit? Whatever is obtained there will become an exhibit that will be relevant to justify the suspicion. So that is why we must isolate whatever DSS have done because it's a novel issue within our criminal jurisprudence and constitutional law. And at the same time, we must also appreciate the fact that corruption is endemic within the society, Nigerian society. And at this, at this point, I want to quote what Justice Nikki Tobi say uh, in judiciary in a democracy. We paper that it presented, which was also captured in a, in a paper presentation. It said, gone are the days when public comment on corruption in the judiciary was anathema or exclusion. It is a greater pretense for any person to say that no member of the entire judiciary of the world is corrupt since I do not want to pretend. I shall not say so, and even if I say so, you will never believe me because you know I am lying. And since I do not want to lie, I will not say so. And so the fact is that some members of the judiciary are corrupt. They could, not be, in a very, they could be in a very small number, but they are there spoiling the basket full of good eggs. There cannot be better justification for the contention that judges have in the past and up to date been removed for corruption. In other words, so much bad water has passed under the bridge from the bad water. Uh, 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 okay, uh, Mr. Alba, we, we, we that get that point. What Justice Nikki Tobi say. And also referring to what uh, Justice Kaude assured. Yeah, again, what just, Justice Kaode just said, which is very fundamental, it was in the report on National Committee on Corruption and Other Economic Crime in Nigeria, page 3 in particular. He said one problem which we must not lose sight of, and indeed to which we must unnecessarily address ourselves, is the realization that corruption has be become very difficult to fight because it looms large, large in the very high places. Corruption bestrides the nation like a colossus. Okay, uh, Mr. Blue Mr. Alabo, just look, hang on a minute. Even openly and only a shamely as a Hang on a minute. Could, let, let me this bring this question. This is just because in. those involved... Could you... I mean, is it larger than our institutions? Do you think that, as presently constituted, our institutions, be it the police or any of those agencies, are well-equipped to... Of course, also partake in this fight against corruption to the extent that they could pick up or arrest anyone without fear or favor and successfully prosecute them. Very well. Very well. But we must also look at our history because the essence of history is to guide us. Why was EFCC set up? Why was ICPC set up? Because as far back as 2000, Nigeria was rated as the second most corrupt country. Then we have a special fraud unit in the police, but they were incapacitated because of our well-meaning uh, pressure 
in prosecution. Even ICPC, we do respect, I respect them because they comply so much with the rule of law in investigation. But co fighting corruption go beyond uh, motivational speaking. And if you look at the achievement of EFC so far with the time frame of no Rubadu, much have been achieved. But down the line, during the time of Lamode, the, the fugitive chairman, how will a chairman of the EFC become a fugitive? That, was a, that is a fundamental question that we must resolve. So there was a time that 15 judges were investigated and the report was sent to the president, but up to now, nothing was heard of them. So in such scenario, will you expect another government to see you just, uh, this institution that is on ground, whereas the DSSC have a mandate so, so, to Section 3115, so four of the 99 Constitution, National Security Service is an existing legislation. What is the provision? Anything that threatens the national security of the nation fall within their scope. Mr. In, Mr. The Mr. Mr. does not fall within security crime, as it were, but it troubles the root of the nation. Let me let me let me but put this uh, before you, Mr. Alobo, before we before the we round this off. Can legitimately uh, investigate. Let, let, let's put this uh, to you before we round off. Uh, uh, I can see the passion uh, with which you have been talking. Uh, first, you're a lawyer, and it would seem also as if you have experienced something of that nature. Let's ask you a personal question before you leave. Uh, in the course of your practice, have you experienced any untoward action towards or from any of the judges? It might not be these ones that have been mentioned. Very well, because I specialize in electoral matters since 2007. And if you look at the judgment from 2007, I don't need to mention them. Even some of them have occupied strategic positions. Some receive up to one billion to give a judgment. I can quote it, the figures are there, and the lawyer that perpetuate those things are also there. But now the person is occupying a sensitive position. That's why I say, if some of all that have been monitoring the corruption in the judiciary for the past 11 years should open mouth, Nigeria will not stand because a lot of issues has happened. And that is why those that follow me in the social media know my view that the electoral integrity is no longer there because you cannot predict the outcome of the judgment. And like in Kogi State, that judgment we do respect for a contentious matter of that nature to not to have a dissenting judgment is an apology to the judiciary and at the same time look at what happened in uh, rivers abia even beno and kogi state it is abnormal for somebody that not participate in a primary to be made a candidate overnight at what time did the participation of primary commence and if you look also in OK Jeff case, somebody that did not participate in all the stages of the election was declared and returned. This was contrary to the Supreme Court position earlier in uh, CPC versus David Magu. So there's a lot of contradiction. And the essence of scholarship is to predict the outcome of judgment. But when you cannot predict the outcome of judgment, you know that something is wrong. Not right, necessarily that you are fair, we... but you know in Supreme Court, in Baker case, we, the judgment was pasted in a uh, in Sahara uh, reporter before the judgment was declared. So when we talk about corruption in judiciary, it's not limited to the judicial officer, but the supporting staff can also help in perpetuating corruption. We so heard you, Mr. Alobo. This within the context in order to appreciate the, All right, then, of we, the issue that this is beyond the power. We hear you, Mr. Joseph Alobo, uh, constitutional and human rights activist. I'm sure the fight against corruption could use the passion that, that you have uh, on this particular matter. We'll be back in a moment. Join us again.